What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create 5 more rave graphics. Alright, so if you don't know, uh, this is the third part of a series. I've already created 10 rave graphics in Illustrator, so if you are interested in seeing more, uh, there's a link to chapter 2 and 1 in the description. Uh, anyways, let's just get started. Alright, so the first one we're going to use is this like kind of like tornado spiral kind of thing, and we did this with a blend tool. And I'll show you real quick how to do it because it's not that hard. So the first thing you want to do is select the color you want to work with. And you want to do this for your stroke color. So not for your fill color. You can leave that empty. So I'll just go with the same color purple that we have here. And you want to make a big circle at the top. And let's just align this real quick and put the stroke width to whatever this stroke width is. Uh, two points. And you want to duplicate this. But So we're going to hold Alt on our keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac. And we're going to drag this to the middle. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, something like this. So now you want to select both of these ellipses, go to Object, Blend, Make. And you'll already have this desired effect. Uh, so what we're going to do again is go to Object, Blend, and then we're going to do Blend Options. And if we click on Specific Steps, you can decide how many like steps in between these two circles you want. So the more you have, the more like trippy it's going to get. And I am fine with six for now. All right, so now that we have this, uh, what we can do is expand this. So we're going to go to object again, blend, expand. And basically we want to group this. I think it's already grouped if we open our layer menu. Yeah. So we're going to go and grab the reflect tool, which you can grab by pressing O on your keyboard. I'm going to click on this side anchor point from the bottom circle. And then with holding Alt or Option on your keyboard, clicking on the other one, it will basically it will duplicate a mirrored version. So yeah, that's the first shape for you. Uh, fairly easy, but if you don't know how the blend tool works, that's kind of how it works. So the next one is also a really, really quick one, but it can give some very interesting effects, especially if you start experimenting with it. So under the ellipse tool, there's also a star tool, and we'll just draw out a star. And what we're gonna do here is go to effect at the top of the menu, and go to distort and transform, plucker and blow. Just make sure that the preview check mark is on so you can see what you're doing. And basically when you start dragging this out, uh, if you do it at the uh, positive side, it will get like some kind of flower shape. But if you go into the negative, you'll get like some explosion tune kind of like looking shape. Uh, so I figure we can go with minus 40% and then we'll just resize this a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is go to stroke here and click on it and align the stroke to the middle. And this will leave with the actual like points. And if we up this a little bit you'll end up with this shape. And the cool thing about this is we haven't really expanded this yet. So if you want to do that, you can just go and select this, go to object, expand appearance, and then you will have the actual shape. Uh, but yeah, if you want to play around with it some more, for example, if we select uh, the inner like points with the direct selection tool, if we round those out, you'll get some interesting results. But if you use the scale tool and scale them out, you'll get like another like weird result. Uh, so yeah, this is a really cool one to experiment with. Also, it might be interesting if you have a star with more than like five points. So yeah, I'll leave that up to you. So the next one, as you probably already have guessed, uh, will also use the plucker and blow tool. <clears throat> so from the middle on outward, we are going to draw a circle. We'll just make sure that this is aligned. We're going to go to object, path, add anchor point. So if we press the direct selection tool, now you can see that we have some extra anchor points in here. And if we go to the plucker and blow tool again, and we'll go into the positive, you'll see that we can actually start making like this flower uh, shape. And we want to duplicate this. So we're going to go press Command C, Command F on our keyboard. And as you can see on the right here in the layer menu, we now have the same uh, shape twice. Uh, but if we open the appearances panel, which you can get to by going to window appearances, uh, we're actually going to remove the plucker and blow tool, the top one, which will leave us with the normal like circle. And on the other one, so we'll grab the bottom one, go to object and expand appearance. And for the other circle in the background, we're going to go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. So now we have two outlined uh, shapes, as you can see if we press Command Y. And now it's basically a matter of working with the Shape Builder tool. I'm just going to drag in right now. And I'm just going to make sure that all of this will be one shape. Or actually, we want to delete the shape. So we're going to hold Alt or Option on our keyboard while we like draw over this. And there we go. And we can flatten it if we want to with the Pathfinder, like this. Moving on to this like kind of 3D thing, uh, it kind of reminded me of like the Joy Division uh, visual that you probably all know. Uh, anyways, what we're gonna do is under the Line Segment tool, you'll find the Rectangular Grid tool. And you wanna draw one out. 
and by not letting go with your mouse and pressing the arrows on your keyboard i'm pressing left right now i basically removed all of the uh, vertical lines and if i press up on my keyboard i will add more horizontal lines so you can do this uh, however you see fit uh, something like this should be fine already and we'll align it and obviously we want to have make sure that this has a nice stroke color so if we select this we can go to object envelope distort make with mesh and this will bring up an envelope mesh menu uh, we will lower the rows to i think two and the columns to two as well maybe the rows to three uh, this is all depend on how uh, detailed you want to have your distortion but i want to have it pretty subtle so i'm going to go with uh, three in rows and two in columns now if we go to the direct selection tool here you can click on these loose anchor points and if we start rotating them and moving them around you'll see the 3d distortion like actually starting to to happen so if we play around with this you'll get like some pretty interesting results and it also almost feels like it's like a 3d cloth kind of thing uh yeah that's how this works so for the final one we want to draw out a circle uh, with a stroke color and we want to grab a smaller circle in the middle so with the outer circle you want to go to effect distort and transform zigzag we want to up the size to something like this this is also like a fairly easy way to create a star with like more more segments i guess uh, so you want to get the points to smooth and now you can just decide on how you want shape to look like. I think I have something like this, but I actually dig this as well. I'm just gonna go with three. All right, so again, you wanna go to object to expand this appearance. So with both of these shapes selected, you wanna go to the Pathfinder menu, which you can find under window, Pathfinder. And you wanna punch out this circle. And now if we go from stroke to fill, you'll end up with this shape. All right, guys, uh, there you have it. Five new rave graphics that you can experiment with in Illustrator. Uh, I try to make these so that you can experiment with new features in Illustrator, or at least not new features, but features that you might not have heard of. If you want to get the project file for this tutorial and all of my other tutorials, you could become a patron. So if you become a patron, you won't only get access to all of my project files from all of my tutorials. You'll also get a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store where I sell a lot of assets uh, and you'll get a Discord role. And if you want to get a higher tier, you'll also get access to the full series where I started a new clothing brand from scratch. So if this is something you're interested in, there will be a link in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or you can join us on Discord. With all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out and I'll see you guys in the next video.